Welcome back to Dial H for Heroclix. This is episode 265. I'm your host, Chris Britton. Let's go. Dial H for Heroclix is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of your latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me in the studio this week is not my sexy ranch hand, Calder Ness. He is off on adventures right now, but he's been so gracious to return to the podcast, and that's Jedi Legend. Welcome back, man. Good evening, Chris, and hell the devil are you? <laughs> Being super British for us, we appreciate that here in the Dial H studio. That's all right. I can tone down the British and just go, just go normal, normal tone. That's normal tone for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> so you you did like uh, Calder and I's English uh, accents on what was it, like two episodes ago, three episodes ago. It is, yeah. So I tend to kind of sit and listen to the podcast at work when it, like, you know, there's a bit of quiet time to kind of just focus on the headphones. And then I sometimes catch the end of like the show in the car, and there's just me howling all the way home, like tears rolling at these hilarious accents. The story is quite funny in itself, too, by the way. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm glad that we made you happy. Glad you got a good yeah. laugh out of that. So that's, that's kind of what we're here to do here on Dial H. Is, uh, like, we like to bring you guys up to date information about the game of Hero Clicks and other nerd related content when it pops up. But we do like to start us off with what made us happy this week. Jedi Legend, would you like to tell us what made you happy? I will. So, as I um, said to you earlier on, wasn't I? I was a bit thinking, ah, oh, what can I say for this bit? Because it's been quite a quiet week. So I was kind of going, well, how far back in time do I go for something? And I completely missed quite a key point. On Friday, we went for a scan to find out the gender of our latest little little legend, basically. So we're going to get a little girl. Oh, congratulations, man. Yeah, thank you very much. See, yeah, I completely forgot it. <laughs> did, did, you, did you immediately have names already picked out or... You, you were just waiting until you found out. We kind of back because we did the surprise both times with the last two. So we thought well, this time we're going. We want to know when to go in, when to you know, be armed with names and like room color and all the rest of it. So we've got a handful of names for both. We just can't agree on them. But now we're at least focused on the female, the girl. Right on. Well, yeah. uh, are, are you gonna in, like indoctrinate her into hero clicks when she's of age to know? Yes, this is the plan. So I've already got one thing <laughs> involved in it, and then the other, the other, the lad, he's a bit too young yet, but um, he's interested in like rolling the dice and stuff. He gets quite, he quite likes that bit. The rest of it, he does not get. He's three, so. Well, I mean, yeah, but <laughs> you know, actually, I've seen some amazing work in the HeroClix community. Uh, give a shout out to uh, Ben Jones down in Australia. He does like a bunch of work with like school and like running HeroClix groups for the students and he has a bunch of them like learning and playing and they're like a big age gap but like i remember somewhere around like around the age of like 10 12 15 like those those ages to get into the game i was like that's so cool just bringing in the next generation because the game is old enough now that you can bring in new <laughs> people into it like that it's so strange to me that's been around you can bring long. people in that are the same age as the game so what on ben yes yeah yeah well done well done but uh, that is really cool, um, and then expanding the uh, Dial H community with uh, another <laughs> another legend. <laughs> well, what made me happy this week is uh, a, a multitude of things, and since we are kind of light on uh, content, we're light on news this week, uh, I just wanted to write a couple of these down so I could go through them, uh, but it was my last day at my real job that I've been at for nine years now, and it was kind of cool. They... Uh, you know how I, they give you, like, going away parties at work, mm -hmm. and, and some people get cakes? Well, I don't like cake, really, but they, they did give me a pie, which I specifically asked for. And so mm. I was like, oh, this is awesome. So I got um, a, a going away pie. That was really nice. <laughs> um, I know it's weird. Some people are like, what, what was it? Pie? What was in the pie? Oh, it was, what was just, in the pie? it was just an apple pie. But it was like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, like, Standard. America. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that was cool. Um, Jessica Jones came out on season three, came out on Netflix like last week or two weeks ago or whatever. Uh, and Jaylene and I are probably going to finish the last episode of it tonight. In a weird and strange way, I really liked this season just because it's very 
low key. There's not a bunch of craziness going on. They weren't trying to be so overly dramatic. Spoiler: There's a serial killer in it, and that's basically the plot line. So like, it, it's just easy to wrap your head around. Very, very uh, down to earth. Um, and then the last thing, and this is something that uh, Jaylene and I actually had planned before we, or before I get shipped off, was. Uh, my favorite band, which is a band I, – I didn't know on the podcast before I said that I don't really listen to music. That's pretty much true, like 99% of the time. But uh, my favorite band when I do listen to music is a band called Silverstein. And Jaylene found out that they were just a state away over in Ohio for us. And so we just drove over to Ohio literally just to go to see my favorite band. And it turned out to be like such – an amazing show. It was a really good time, and it's something I'm I'm really gonna appreciate. You know, here in like a year when I'm halfway across the world, probably. Who knows? You know, I'm just gonna be able to look back that, have a really good memory about that, and that's genuinely what made me happy this week. So that's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. I just remember another thing as well. Uh, again, going back in time, last one on the show, I just bought the tickets for the Comic Con, so we went and did that. Uh, in full kit, full get up. Uh, everyone else was there dressed up as well. There's the after party. So that was pretty good. Did you cosplay? Really yeah, it worked. We turned up in fancy, I call it fancy dress. So we turned up in all our costumes and we were all our kit, but we didn't actually do the, the bit on stage and the show. We went to watch it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we had like Green Arrow. We had Red Hood from the comics, Red Hood from Arkham Asylum, and Captain America from Civil War. Which one were you? I was Red Hood, Arkham Asylum. Oh, right on, right on. Wait, so. <laughs> That's a weird hodgepodge of Marvel and DC going on there. Well, it's because we didn't really kind of plan anything in terms of, like, should we all go as, like, you know, X-Men, or should we all go as this, 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 everyone just kind of goes, yeah, let's go. And we got to, like, a month before, like, well, what are you going as? Oh, I'm going to choose this. So everyone just kind of ran in their own directions. Okay, so that actually brings up a weird question. Yeah. Do you think it's cliche when a huge group of people agree to be a certain theme? Because I've definitely seen a bunch of X-Men. I've seen an entire rogues gallery of Batman, which was awesome, mm -hmm. but is it cliche to do that? No, that is what, that is the goal, that's the aim. Next time, we should be a lot more prepped and planned. <laughs> we should be picking characters, not like randomly. Because like, when we're doing the, on the WhatsApp chat, my friend goes, oh, I'm probably going to go as this guy, and guess who it is? I'm like, we're literally going as the same character, different costume. <laughs> so the last time I cosplayed, which I've only ever cosplayed like three times, and it's always been the same character, which is Moon Knight. Well, the last time that I cosplayed, I noticed that I was getting, like, as you're walking, you're kind of getting drug into photos with people that you make sense to be with. So mm -hmm. as, as Moon Knight, I was getting drug into, like, Marvel Knights photos. Does that make sense? Yep. So, yep, so yep, it was like, yep. like this, this, here's Elektra, here's Luke Cage, here's Spider-Man. No one, no one that was dressed as Thor wanted to be in a picture with Moon Knight. Like, that that kind of makes sense. I got that. But. I had an embarrassing moment where last year I did Deadpool. And it, like, it was actually the year before, and it was quite popular. So people were like, having photos of Deadpool. I was kind of playing up a little bit as well because that was quite cool. This time I got a guy saying, like, ah. Oh, Red Hood, he'll take it, he'll, he'll do, he'll get a photo. So I jump in, like, expecting it to be like me with them. He's like, oh, this is awkward. I meant that it was you taking the photo of us, but we can do it after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> that is weird. Well, oh, yeah. I don't, the, the cosplay community just always has been great. Just, it's just a bunch of people having fun and just doing what they want to do, and I'm like, I'm all for it. Just like, Go live your life. It's super awesome to see a bunch of different people in different kinds of costumes. And then you get those, like, really obscure costumes that only those people know who it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess kind of Moon Knight is, in, is that way for, like, a lot. But when I was cosplaying as Moon Knight, there would always be, like, that one, like, guy or two that were just like, Oh, my God! Moon Knight! I never thought I'd see a Moon Knight cosplay! <laughs> I'm yeah. like, here I am. <laughs> Also, it's a really brave choice because it's very white. Like, for example, if I did Moon Knight, I would start the day in like you know sparkling white. I'd come out looking like Clayface. <laughs> yeah, I got I got kind of. <laughs> that's that's a that's a true fact about Moon Knight. Uh, so, I kind of a little bit jealous of all the characters that don't have to wash their costumes as often. And plus, watching mm. that cape is a gigantic pain <laughs> in the butt. It's like huge and thick. That's what she said. Anyway, we're gonna move on. I'm the only one that's going to laugh at that jerk. <laughs> that's okay. We're not here to talk about cosplay all night. We are here to talk about the game of Fear Click, so we'll let's jump into the new section since we got a bit of that this week. Oh, 
All right. The first thing that I want to talk about is going to be the rotation that is going to be affecting people out there that are going to be playing competitive events. You probably, if you already are playing competitive events, you already know what's getting rotated because it's probably either decimating your team or not touching yours at all and you totally lucked out. But let's go through it in case anybody out there was thinking about getting into it. So out of the five-figure booster sets that are rotating as of tomorrow, uh, Civil War, Superior Foes of Spider-Man, The Joker's Wild, Deadpool and the X-Force, ADW, that's Avengers Defenders War, and What If. So goodbye, Hawkeye. There's actually quite a bit that's rotating out that was used in the meta from these. And uh, we will get into some of those in the community section. They're definitely going to be popping up again. So those are your five-figure booster sets. The Fast Forces uh, are going to be the ones from those associated uh, booster sets, as well as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Heroes in a Half Shell and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Return. Uh, those are those are the Fast Forces. Then the game, the convention exclusive game elements that are rotating out, it looks like it's a huge list, but it's actually really not because when you look at it, half the freaking list is mm. everything that's the Punisher and the Punisher van equipment stuff that was attached to it. So other than that, we've got uh, let's see, Hawkman, Red Robin, Ace the Bat Hound, both the Batman with the bomb and the one with the surfboard and the pieces that are associated with, associated with that. The Arrow Cycle, along with Arrow and Diggle, Dr. Nemesis, Cosmic Daredevil, Man, Spider, Rocket Raccoon, and Groot. Uh, that was the first time I think I remember going, why did they not make this into a duo click? And uh, to round it off, it is the... Uh, let's see, TMNT stuff from Casey Jones, the, the comics list of Casey Jones, Shredder, the Turtle Van, and then Jack Frost and Ga Gray Gage. Uh, there's not much in there <laughs> that was even used, so I don't think that that's going to affect almost anything. Uh, there was some stuff in there that I think people were playing around with and really wanted to make it into meta, but it, it really kind of never did. I was hoping that the Punisher Van would, like back when it came out, but then it it just didn't. What whatever happened to Grey Gage? Do you remember that piece? My qu my question to you was, who is Grey Gage? <laughs> so, Dude, that, I on. swear to you, that is the name of one of our episodes. Who is Grey? Really? Gage? Yes. Oh, when wow. that figure came out, I was like, who who is this? Is this the guy in the white trench coat doing the diving with the guns? So no, that's Doctor Nemesis. He is from uh, the X Men and specifically from the X Club. I, I can't remember what storyline that is, but. It's Dr. Like Nemesis, him. I know. Yeah, I know him. But the Grey Gage guy, who's that one then? So I, th I think that it is a character that was made up for uh, this game by Wizkids. <laughs> right. I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not joking. Like, they just kind of did whatever they wanted to do. And it's not unheard of that they've done stuff like that. Like, Holiday True. Elf was something that they just made up. You know, like, it's generic enough that they could have done it, but they just they – just, what I expected was for them to launch this whole group of quote unquote superheroes or supervillains that were just made for this game that do not exist inside of the DC or the Marvel universe, and then they just never took off. Unless I'm completely wrong and Gate Gray Gage came from something specific, but we never found out where that came from. No one ever told us, so maybe someone can tell us now. And that was two years ago. Sure. I remember a handful of characters were created for Heroclix Online. There was about half a dozen from memory. I didn't really get into it super much. I just remember seeing characters that I'd never seen before. And it was basically there were WizKids created ones just so you could get started. But I can't remember any of their names. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Remember. I know what you're talking about, and I remember we were talking about them back then when Green mm, Gate mm. was coming out. But people were like, "But Grey Gage isn't even one of those." So I'm like, <laughs> uh, "Okay, well." I guess if anybody out there knows what that was even intended to be from WizKids' side, at least let us know, because I would just genuinely be interested in it. Moving on, uh, the monthly organized play sets. Uh, let's see. Sinister Syndicate, White Lantern Core, the Gamma Smash, the Brave and the Bold, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Injustice League, Defenders, the Justice League, the Alpha Flight, Batgirl, is that really what it's called? It's literally just called Batgirl uh, from 2016. And then the hmm. Toy Soldier is rotating out as well. So, um, yeah, that Dr. Octopus, 
That's that's about the only thing I see in there that really people wanted to play. Scrolling through it real quick with my eyes. Yeah, I'm not really not really good at this because I don't play that competitively, so I kind of get flavors of it on Twitter and Facebook and you know, if you go on the realms or whatever. But for me, I don't really kind of pay that close attention to it. So yeah, Doctor Who was neat is a name that popped up. The rest of it, uh, yeah, for me, I'm just like, yeah, that's a cool character. I'd bag it on any team. I'd be happy with that. So another fun fact, I guess, about this is just, and while we were on the topic of Moon Knight, that Moon Knight in there from the July of 2016 Defenders is the Moon Knight that here is the Dial of Dial H official casual comparisons winner for uh, Moon Knight. That's our favorite official Moon Knight piece that has come out. So there's okay. that. And I actually I really like that piece. That's the piece that I use to call in when I bring in the ID card if I ever do. So. Well, that is it. That's rotation. Um, I guess you can write in and let us know if that just destroys your team. I know Shredders are cycling out. Hawkeye's gone. Uh, or if you're just super, super happy to see that they're gone, let us know. Um, do you have any last words you want to talk about that before we move on? No, again, that's like a weak spot for me, so I'm happy to, to, to crash through. Yeah, let's keep going. Uh, we did get one piece from, uh, well, we are in full swing now of the Regenesis. It is uh, the OP Summer Event uh, for Marvel, and a lot of people are actually sending us pictures. We appreciate that. I just got one from uh, Citizen Chris Kurtz. That's pretty cool, uh, letting us know what he's playing at or playing with. Um, and we did get a Chase figure that got leaked. It was like last week. But I figured we could probably talk about it now because it's just fun to talk about. So why don't you take it yeah, away? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, Regenesis, that really snuck up because we've had quite a lot of reveals recently and I kind of lost track of when sets are coming out. So to hear you like, this one's landed now. See, this one was uh, the Chase. This is a Chase Cannonball. So I don't know if anyone's a fan of Cannonball or if you're kind of you know, hanging on to one that's you know, really quite popular. He came out at number 17 in the set. Uh, he's an X-Men. You've got two point costs. That seems to be the trend at the moment. And again, also following trend, he's quite cheap at 60 points, and that's the top end. And then you can get a little cheaper version at 40. So that kind of is you know, loads of different builds there. You've got six clicks for the 60 points, and then four clicks at 40. He's got some keywords. He's got the Gene Gray School for Higher Learning, New Mutants and X-Men. So some good fits there for some teams. And what have we got? So he's got a lot of uh, sort of, you know, the white box powers there. That's kind of most of his diet until you get to the the end of it where it starts getting a bit more for, you know, standard, standard pack. He's got improved movement. We've got ignores and destroys blocking. So that's that's quite nice and also very thematic for him. Uh, as you know with Genesis, the set, you kind of split into like you know, the, all the, the gold team or the blue team. So you've got Wolverine on the yellow and you've got Cyclops on the blue. And quite often see this trait where one falls to the other. So they've gone with I stand with Wolverine. So Cannibal's part of his clan. He's got a powerful blast off. That's his movement power. He's got the wing there, wing speed. It gives him sidestep, but it also grants him the improved movement, and it goes through characters. If he moves in a direct path, he can then make a close attack, targeting all the characters that he's moved through. So that's great. He just kind of rushes through, just punching and kicking people as he goes past, uh, regardless of the adjacency. So again, just that nice straight line through them. Uh, instead of normal damage, he can hit the characters, and they're dealt his printed damage, which is quite nice. So if you can find a nice line of people, you can pretty much you know, whack everyone for three, because that's where he's got sat top end for four clicks, moving into two clicks at the end. Um, what else have we got? And also, I think they get a bit of knockback as well, if I'm reading that correctly. So it's, a, it's really weird. First of all, it is a power action to do that. I mean, he always mm -hmm. has sidestep, but it is a power action to activate that improved movement and blasting through characters thing. It, it says instead, uh, I'm sorry, uh, they're dealt Cannonball's printed damage value and are placed into a square that he did not move through adjacent to their current square. So I wonder what would happen like uh, in the order of operations where you, you move through somebody, you hit them, and then there is not a legal square that they can be placed into. Do they just sit there? They, yeah, they don't move. If there's no legal square, they just sit tight. All right. So if, you, if for example, you're in a, like a three-square corridor and you know, Campbell blasts all the way through it and it just gets knocked one, they can't go anywhere, that's just yeah, that's just no movement there. All right. Uh, what's what's uh, on the defense then, so he's got, for the, again, for four clicks, blast field. That gives him toughness. 
don't underestimate toughness. It comes in handy. It might save your life. But it's very key. At the end of the turn, so we're talking about the end of turn sort of phase, uh, underlined there, if Cannibal moved at least one square this turn, you can choose one, be it energy shield deflection or impervious. And Cannibal chooses that power until your next turn. And he also gets a 17.1, and that version changes the defense power. So I have to reread this about a thousand times before I actually get the twist on it. So bear with me. Let go. Toughness. End of turn. If he moved at least one square, he can use energy shield deflection and impervious. So they don't force you to choose. You get both if you're running that version. So I'm not going to lie. I really, really like this cannonball. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the other ones, well, first of all, there's a cannonball that... I kind of view him as two different characters, right? There's Cannonball when he was in the Hickman run, where he's part of the Avengers, and then there's everyone else's viewpoint of Cannonball, which is just he's always been a new mutant part of the X-Men. Well, hmm. if you look back in time at the Cannonballs that have been made, um, the one from GSX doesn't have the X-Men keyword. The one from Wolverine and the X-Men also does not have the X-Men keyword. If you go to the Deadpool and the X-Force set, you get one that finally has it, but he's 15 points more expensive, and I mm. actually I don't think that he's that good, except for he has a stop click, which is kind of cool, um, and it does give you the option to use it normally or as a double power action, uh, which is kind of cool, but I, I still like the sculpt on this one better. And then the one mm. that, that uh, is like kind of the best of the both worlds, which is the M024 cannonball it, he's keyworded avengers and x-men so you could use him on either or but he's 125 points yeah i was about to say that he is my current cannonball he's my go-to but seeing that new one and the point difference you kind of have to take a little breath and go is it worth trading up yeah so i i legitimately i like this one a lot and the sculpt is awesome mm -hmm. so okay well if you end up getting that get a hold of that cannonball out there uh, congratulations, because it is a chase, and he's probably, I don't know, he may be in the runner-up for like best one of the best cannonballs ever made, probably. Uh, especially because he's not just that, he's not really that much of a loved character. In the, like, most people don't go, oh, I love the X-Men, yeah, my favorite X-Men is Cannonball, but... Uh, maybe I could count. I could count on one hand how many times I've heard people say their favorite character is Cannibal and have like all the fingers spare, like not a single person. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, it's like people want to, unless the character is just ungodly good, right? Like, those mm. meta pieces when people don't care about the character. When do you want to use a character? When you want to use a character, you want to use a character because you like them, and if they're really powerful then it typically goes hand-in-hand, hand, but they're going to be more expensive. So, that being said, do you want to spend 125 points on Cannonball, who most people don't really know him, and he's not that great? He's okay, but he's not that great. Or you can get Cannonball for 60 points. Or 40 if you want. I think we put it like that. You think, well, you know, the go-to has got to be the 60 point one. Yeah. Or, you know, points to points. Is it, yeah, the points. However, it's a chase. So getting a hold of it becomes the trick. So uh, yeah, it's like, true. oh, a rock and a hard place. But a 40-point cannonball is awesome. I thought we can do. I mean, that's great. Yeah. All that. That's a lot of damage. That's pretty sweet. Potentially. So. Potentially. Uh, but it, I think we have the entire set spoiled now. We're not going to go through mm -hmm. uh, the whole set or anything like that. But uh, you can go and read that on the realms if you feel... Incline, but we've been covering as many as we could while uh, while it was getting ready to drop and stuff like that. So uh, thanks for sticking around while we were going through all that because there was so much stuff that was dropping all at once with like Black Panther and then Regenesis and it was bouncing back and forth and then we went mm -hmm. to Origins and everything all got caught up. So I, it is what it is, life, you know. Yeah, there's also a lot of X-Men dropping. So, again, it's just kind of rereading it twice to know who, which character fits into which set. It's really X-Men heavy year. Yeah, that's very true. Some people are really, really happy about that, too, because they <laughs> love the X-Men. We're getting messages, at least on, on Twitter, they are like, this might be the set that gets me back into Heroclix. I'm like, welcome back to Heroclix. Uh, Why did you leave? This actually might be the... Because some people have dropped off of the podcast, like, listening to it, and have come back. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, I didn't listen for, like, 20 episodes, but I'm back. And I'm like, welcome back. So <laughs> if this is you coming back, welcome back. Uh, tons of stuff has changed. 
Uh, and by the way, I'm leaving the podcast. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am so bye. Uh, this might be, so uh, that's all you wanted to say about Cannibal, right? I think that's everything on Cannibal. I think we pretty much covered it. He can okay. whack stuff and do really well at it. Okay. Yep, I agree. It doesn't get more simpler than that. So <laughs> uh, this may be the last time that I do this segment on the podcast. So uh, let's get into a segment called Hidden Gem. But wait, wow, that looks like a diamond. All right. So Hidden Gem is a segment where uh, I take a look back at one piece that was kind of overlooked, overshadowed in a set that came out. Not because it was not good, because it, it, it is good. It's actually really good. And I'll explain that here in a second. But the reason why it was overshadowed is just because there's so much good stuff in the set. It was hard to pay attention to everything in the set. So the most recent Marvel full set that has come out was Black Panther uh, and the Illuminati. And there's so much good stuff in this set, guys and gals, like unbelievably good stuff. We played a bunch of the Battle Royales over at Origins, and everyone's talking about the figures that come with the gems and the figures that come with the gauntlets and blah, blah, blah. But don't forget that there's other pieces in the set, so let's talk about one of these. It just happens to be an uncommon and uh, we're going to start off with the keywords, not because Wakanda is actually that great of a keyword, but because this figure also has the warrior keyword, in the event you were ever playing, a, you need to play a generic team, you pick warrior, this might be one of your go-to warriors, and it is number 38, Okoye. She is 65 points, and she's dumb. She's super dumb. Uh, for 65 points, you do get five clicks of life. And uh, the, one of the, the traits that all the Wakandan figures have is the same Wakanda forever, where if they die, after they die, you can heal a friendly character of one click. And if whatever, if they have uh, the Wakanda keyword, it does some stuff with their stats as well. But if you're just playing a warrior keyworded team, probably not going to trigger that second part. But at least you get a free click out of them dying. That's not really that important. You don't want this figure to die. Chances are it won't die, and I'll explain why. Because it has a second trait that says, Summon the War Rhinos. Jedi Legend, how do you feel about pieces that generate pogs? I th okay, so here we go. I don't mind it. I kind of like the um, concept of it. So you've got a character, and there's something else thematic that goes with it. So this uh, this new character here, Okoye, they can summon the War Rhinos, which I think was quite anticipated, and it was great. You could you know, bring them into the game. My beef with the Pog era, anything to do with Pogs, is that you get the card that says, and oh, this person can generate the Pog, uh, and you're like, okay, great, where is it in the box? And it just doesn't exist. So, is it on the back of the card? Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. So if it isn't, you've got nothing but like a, some dial to work, you know, some script to work from and some colours for that. If it is on there, you're like, well, I'm not going to cut the card up just to get the Pog out. And I think, you know, WizKids loses the trick there. All these Pogs, they don't, like, you know, have characters for it, but they're another set that have, like, the pop-off ones. So, argh, that's my beef. Okay, all right. I <laughs> totally get that. That's fair, you know, because... Yeah, and you see a lot of people that they do very creative things, like do their 3D printing of their drop bears or whatever or get custom made action tokens made offline which is also really cool mm -hmm. uh so there's ways to circumvent that but as a piece as a playing utensil how do you feel like when you're sitting down and you say you have like devil dinosaur or say you have the penguin like you want to pop out as many pogs as you possibly can right it makes the game dumb right it can be. So, for example, anything that was in the animated Batman set where you've got, like, or you can just create more henchmen. You just look down and go, this is fantastic because I've got two, like, you've got Two-Face and the Penguin. All of a sudden, I've rolled really well. Boom. There are literally henchmen everywhere. I love it. Right. So, this character. Here's one of the best parts. Uh, when you give this character a power action, you can generate a rhino, a bystander. Okay, it pops up in your starting area. But if you give her a double power action, she can generate two of them at the same time mm. in the starting area. Okay, double power action. Well, it's going to take damage. No, the character's not going to take damage because Okoye has Indomitable. So you can double, pack, double action token her on first turn, two rhinos, and just keep doing this. But here's just a little bit more to add on top, you know, a little bit of cherry, some whipped cream. We, she, she has leadership herself. 
So you're <laughs> like, yeah, you're. She's canceling her own actions out by doing this. So you're not wasting actions by just generating these stupid little war rhinos. You can keep doing it. There's no downfall if they like get taken out. Like, do you remember the old Doctor Strange that pumped out the astral projection Doctor Stranges? Very vague. Remember that? Yes, yeah. But you could pump out quite regularly. Is that right? Yeah, and if you killed this the the astral Doctor Strange, you're uh, you're you had to roll for it, and if you rolled a certain number, then the Doctor Strange took damage. If I'm remembering that correctly, there's no downfall to these rhinos dying. By the way, you can just keep pumping them out, and you're not limited to a certain number of them like you are with other characters. Uh, Devil Dinosaur, right? Can only pop out a certain number of them. Mm-hmm. Do- Dr. Demonicus can only pop out a certain number of them. Uh, so you can just keep popping out these war rhinos. So you're like, well, what do they do, Chris? That's a really good question. Uh, ten speed charge with ten attack and three damage, and they just happen to have quake and invulnerability as well. <sighs> that's, okay. so t- that's so tasty for a pog. Two pogs. A pog. Yeah, you have about two of these little things, and yes, they're pogs. We get it. You can kill them super easy. We can't kill that easy because it has invulnerability. You're going to have to waste an outwit just to kill this thing with poison <laughs> or something stupid. So they're, they're nothing to laugh at. You know, it's like kind of whatever. Okay, so remember, that's a trait to pop them out. So you can do that the whole freaking dial. Um, say you want to use her as more of an offensive character rather than just a pog generator all right that's fine she moves on to click number two she's got 10 she drops one attack from 11 down to 10 by the way she has 11 attack and three damage so it's not like she can't also do damage but on click number two sidestep quake 10 attack two damage with close combat expert you can hit for four damage if you want she still maintains that 18 defense on both click one and two and then lastly just because i guess they thought it was fun on click number five, she has 11 attack with steel energy. She has steel energy on clicks four and five, by the way. With 18 and then 19 defense, respectively, with defend, which is weird. I kind of totally understand it because she's Black Panther's, you know, de facto number one Dora Milaje. Mm. You know, she, she, she is his right-hand woman in this case. So she should definitely be able to defend her Black Panther, her king or queen, if it, she's taking care of Shuri. Uh, but she can, she has 11 attack and 3 printed damage on the last click with close combat expert. So you can sidestep and then punch somebody for 5. Once again, this is only a 65-point figure. So mm, nice. I just, she's, got, she's got defense. You can hide behind the rhinos. They all yeah. listen. They just get pumped up to 19, and she's like, hey, hey, you can't touch me. Exactly. By the way, the War Rhinos do have a trait that says Passenger 1, but only to carry friendly characters with the Wakanda mm-hmm. keyword, so they can carry a Koye. Duh, that makes sense. So you could double token, uh, double power action, pump out a Rhino, and then and then literally just run the Rhino up with a Koye if you wanted to, like, next to each other like that could, that could be turn one if you wanted so you got movement you got these stupid little rhinos that can do actually do damage <laughs> they can tank some damage if you want it's just annoying so for like it's like little 65 point piece i think maybe you don't overlook this figure mm-hmm. not saying it's gonna be meta it's not but especially for like a fun little casual game when people are they're expecting to take on something your 150 point character you got this 65-point little annoyance character back here pumping out rhinos just because. So, you like it? I'm reading through it. I think it's absolutely great. I'm just thinking of, like, really annoying things you can do with it. So, for example, later in the game, you run in, you carry her in, you've got, like, massive defense in the rhino, bash, 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 you've got another rhino stood there, you can just run her out again. <laughs> it's like a taxi shuttle run, in and out she goes. Yeah, I really like this figure. Now, coincidentally, this happened to be the, like, one Wakandan keyworded figure I did not get from this set, which Uh, is probably why I didn't see it as as good as what I now see that it is. Now, when I play this piece in the future, I'm going to play it on a Wakanda keyword team. So, you know, it's... Uh, she's going to be even better with the Wakanda forever trait. And then also mm-hmm. her special defense power, is, it does give her toughness and then a unique modifier that says adjacent friendly characters with the Wakanda keyword modify defense by plus one. Unfortunately, the rhinos don't have the Wakanda keyword. 
So that's not going to work for them. However, it'd be really cool if you just keep her right next to a Black Panther who generally always has like a night or like an 18 defense mm. with cl- with combat reflexes anyway. <laughs> so you know when your Black Panther's running around with 21 defense, yeah, it's kind of fun. That's all I'm saying. It's kind of fun. If anyone, if anyone's played that team. Let us know on Twitter. That'd be awesome to see how that played out. Just how annoying that would be. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, I, we mentioned this before on the podcast. It's just the Wakandan keyword ended up being because of the set. This little like uh, white weenie deck of hero clicks. It's a Magic the Gathering reference. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, uh, but it's like all these like little tiny characters that on the surface with just one of them, it, you, know, you don't really care much about a Do- Dora Milaje. You don't really care much about a Midnight Angel, whatever. But when there's, like, 15 of them on your side of the field, and they all, like, boost each other's stats and stuff, you're like, oh, okay, these little 20-point figures can hit for 4 damage with 11 attack. That's, um, that's something. So, fun. I like it. So I, I need to get my hands on this, and it's only an uncommon. I do not know how I went through that many Battle Royales at Origin, and I did not even see one of them <laughs> not one and it's only an uncommon like i said in gin that's a missed trick there yeah so all right ladies and gentlemen hopefully uh maybe you'll play in a koye out there and get some use out of her and have more get more use out of those war rhinos i want to see those on the field running rampage through there that's just super funny also remember make sound effects as you charge across the the battlefield <laughs> that's how you make the game way more fun i don't really know what like sounds a rhino makes, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Speaking of not knowing what sounds a an animal makes, this is just a tangent. Um, do you know what a baby giraffe sounds like by chance, Jedi Legend? Oh, yeah, all the time. Everyone knows what a baby <laughs> giraffe sounds like, right? Yeah, I didn't know what it sounded like either, so I Googled that, um, and that sounds absolutely nothing like what I expected a baby giraffe to sound like. So if you're just genuinely curious, you can YouTube that as well. Um, your life will never be <laughs> the same after that. So, all right. Well, uh, we do have a community to get through, and that's about all the news, uh, all the, the segments that we're going to do on this episode. But before we do, before we get to the community section, we should probably let you know that Dial H for Hero Clicks works off the value for value model, and our goal is to entertain you guys and gals. And if you got some entertainment out of that uh, random talk about baby giraffes, uh, you can jump on to our <laughs> uh, jump onto our Patreon. You can get your heroic title, like Citizen Vigilante Protagonist. You'll hear some of those when we get into the community section. And um, we have, like, just a few sets of custom-made Dial H uh, dice left. So if you would like to lock down a pair, you can jump on um, before the beginning of this next month. I remember, the heroic ranking up ceremonies occur the second episode, but the way PayPal works is it's at like the first four days or something. So if you want to jump on a Patreon, jump on now, and then we can get those uh, before we run out because supplies actually are limited. Now, this is the last call for anyone out there that has – uh, you, you have your heroic title, you are entitled to a set of dice, and we did not get them to you because you didn't tell us what your address was. You need to reach out to us with your address uh, so we can get that to you to make sure that you get one of those so we can uh, like appreciate you guys for being around. Uh, so don't forget to do that. So let's get into the community section. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Okay, so uh, we have a bunch of different community to get through. Uh, normally, we start off with um, oh, we got a new follower on Twitter. That's fun. Uh, je- je- normally, we start off with the community Tuesdays uh, question, but since we have the man, the myth, the legend, Jedi Legend on the podcast this week, how about we start off with Jedi Legends here? Clicks tip of the week. Help you, I can. <laughs> Take you to your destination. I will. Hello, welcome to my Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> Is it weird to say that? <laughs> it does feel really weird. Okay, so what have we got this week? I went with villains can be relentless, can't they? Clicks villains too, especially ones with the Masters of Evil type team ability, as it grants colossal stamina, which means they can keep the action tempo really high for the cost of an unavoidable damage each time you use it. However, it's worth noting that the only Master of Evil medic is the invincible Iron Man Crimson Cow, and it's worth noting that's at the back end of her dial. 
Is that really the only one that has an ability to heal? If it's the only one I found, so if somebody else has found one that I didn't, then oh yeah, by, by all means, pop it in the notes if you had just to know. But yeah, I thought, well, if you're just like literally tanking this team, and I, you are pushing them every go just to really punish your team, how are they kind of getting better? Yeah, how far can you push them? So I thought, well, what are the medics out there? And there's literally only one, and it's at the end of her dial. So to keep them alive and still remain in theme, it's a little bit more of a challenge. Okay. Well, uh, you know, it actually came up recently when we were playing Battle Royales because uh, Titania from the Black Panther set has the Masters of Evil, and then so does Moonstone. That's not her name in the set. It's uh, Miss Marvel. Mm -hmm. Totally useful. Super crazy useful. I was definitely doing that, and people didn't remember what it did as we were doing the Battle Royale, so I was like, uh, I'm going to go. They're like, you're, you have two tokens. I was like, Master of Evil team ability. They're like, oh, yeah. I was like, pop. So it totally caught them off guard. Definitely an amazing team ability when it works. Now, unfortunately, I kept missing. <laughs> oh, damn it. With, with, with these, like, sneaky little attacks that I was getting in with these characters that I kept missing. And I was like, uh, except for that one, uh, I, I think it was the game that I actually had two Miss Marvels that I was running at the same time. That's the game that I'm pretty sure I won. Um and that's why, <laughs> because I kept being able to go every turn in a row. It's pretty awesome. Cool. Yeah, man, it's not nice when you keep losing the dice, though, and you just keep pushing. Like, the only person taking damage is me. This isn't fair. I want to reroll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully that tip helps everybody out there. We will jump into the Community Tuesdays question this week, which is, with, rota with rotation just around the corner, what clicks will you be sad to see go and who won't be missed? I believe, uh, unfortunately, I believe Facebook took it this week on most number of answers. So we will start off with super fan Lucas Van Holland, who said, Goodbye, Champion Pool. I'll hmm. always love you. Oh, I feel the tears shedding for him. S sad face. <laughs> What have you got? Are you going for, um, you going to go all Facebook or you want to kind of chop and change between Yeah, Twitter? we'll just jump back and forth between Facebook and Twitter. So Twitter had uh, a sort of dozen or so comments on it, but I think a lot of love went to the Avengers Defenders Hawkeye. Goodbye, Hawkeye. So I think we got, uh, is it Low Miller? Is that protagonist, Low Miller? Is that the same Miller? Or same I surname? Think, I think as of right now, he is okay. not technically a citizen, but he will be uh, okay. come next month. Cool. All right. So preemptive one to that one. Yes, yeah, so he's gone with, I will miss Hawkeye from AW. He's so much fun to play. Goodbye, Hawkeye. No one else is sad to see you leave. But he got a lot of, uh, um, I don't know, it wasn't him that got love. It was the next one down. Okay, I'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, I have an answer from Nathan Dial who said, we'll miss Hawkeye since he was a fun glass cannon and I love keeping it theme. Won't miss Shredders. They beat me too many times. <laughs> When we got, um, I think it's da, 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 protagonist Ben Jones. He's the man from Australia, right? That is correct. And he says, he was, oh, oh I just figure I've not played it myself, but gonna miss Miss Devil Dinosaur. He is so awesome. Happy to see you all by gone. Great piece. But dislike playing against it. I bet that sounds just like him, right? <laughs> well, it's a, we have a British man doing an Australian <laughs> man's accent. To to someone out there in the United, at least one listener was like, sounded exactly the same. Was that even an accident? Yes. That was Dave. That was Dave. Dave's on the radio. Go get him. Go get him. Wind it up. Speaking of Dave, we have an answer from David Gaffney on Facebook. He said, I'm sad to see the Shredders go, but it seems to not matter anyway because there are so many pieces now. It seems that uh, seems with that annoying pink power. I think he's talking about Precision Strike, right? Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm happy to see Hawkeye go. Won't miss him in the least. By the way, <laughs> this is the piece that I really, really wanted to get a hold of, that Hawkeye. And then, unfortunately, he ended up being crazy meta, so it mm -hmm. drove the price up. Like, at any given point when I checked him on Cool Stuff, he was like $95 and all, always out of stock. So I'm hoping that there's just this flood of people selling their Hawkeyes. Mm -hmm. Back to cool stuff. So maybe one of these days I can actually get my hands on one. Yeah, there was a real spike, wasn't there? Because everyone kind of passed him over. Then all of a sudden it was like, whoa, 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 wait a second. He's actually pretty good. You missed this. And then, yeah, like I said, the dog just shot the other way. Do, um, do you remember um, Balls of Fury, Nick Fury? Yep, yep, yep. Yes, so he did the exact same thing. Because I pulled him, 
And when I pulled him, I looked him up at the time. It was like the day after the set came out. And he was only like 20 bucks. And then two weeks or three weeks later, he was like 110. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I sold him too early. Because oh, <laughs> I sold him for like 30 bucks. I'm like, no! Someone is rubbing their hands. Yeah, I think um, I was a bit gutted because Elseworlds just missed the rotation cutoff. And I was really looking forward to like all the Dark Knight Rises. I don't know returns, like the Batman... Green Arrow, Superman, because they're the ones I didn't get because they were like stupid money. Oh, you know what? I actually, I'm glad that you brought that up because I totally forgot to mention that earlier. Elseworlds, I thought that was so weird. Elseworlds did not rotate out, Mm. but what if did? Yeah, I think they they kind of just, did they bend the rule by a day to keep it in or was it a day under? I can't remember the specific. I I don't, I mean... Skin of teeth. What if did come out 6.07 of 2017? And then, let's see, a month and 12 days later is when Elseworlds came out. Okay. So it it either just fell perfectly Hmm. in between those two dates, or WizKids was like, no, we we probably don't want to get rid of one additional DC set, so we'll just, Hmm. like, keep it in, you know? And honestly, I'm okay with either one of those if those are the answers. Yeah, I can I can sit tight. I can wait another year for the prices to drop on them. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, back on Twitter. So uh, we went with there's a bit of a flurry as to the love for Devil Dinosaur between uh, Laura Miller and Ben Jones, uh, having seen him and all the rest of it. And then Laura Miller just says that he wants to say also to the fallen of all the hero clicks this year, and it's got like the Hunger Games giving the wave, you know, the salute. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. three fingered salute. That's it. That's the one. Dip, dip, yep, dip. Yep. <laughs> Uh, we have super fan Eric Caves who said, "Kiss the best piece of all goodbye. <laughs> Replacing our very own Captain Britain will be." <laughs> Thank you, Eric Caves. Uh, he spelled it Britain like my last name, Britain, sure. not Britain. Uh, <laughs> will be uh, will be nigh impossible. This is the first time I'm reading. This is the cold read, so um, mm-hmm. I will definitely watch this YouTube video later. Uh, but we'll get through the actual comment now. It's going to be a long time before we see him again, soldiers. We'll get all the greatest buffs from him. Uh, bring Squirrel Girl and the Mutagen Ooze for a killer combo. Ready a sideline of cosmic figures. If your force has exactly two friendly figures, he can call one in at random. Try to keep him on higher elevate. Is this a song? <laughs> it looks like song lyrics. Like he, he wrote a song or something. Um, try to keep him on high, higher elevation. Things will always go poorly downstairs. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got those downstairs mix-ups, guys. Uh, actually, somebody somebody messaged us. It was like, uh, here's another WizKids downstairs mix-up. Uh, occasionally, we might see some Golden Age play. Never forget the critical hits he delivered to, to all of us. Uh, we're going to miss you, buddy. Thank you, Eric Case. I really do appreciate that. Uh, I don't know if that has anything to do with what the, the Community Tuesdays <laughs> question, but he made sure that we saw it in the Community Tuesdays question sure. area. So thank yeah. you. I will A definitely beautiful watch tangent. It. Yeah, here in a minute, or here in a little bit, yeah. Uh, okay, next on the Twitter, we've got Superhero the Ruffian, little classic superheroes. I play more casual than competitive, so this doesn't matter to me. That's kind of how I feel most of the time. But if I had to see something go, it would have to be a couple of pieces from the ADW. I would have loved to see Ghost Rider play more, and somehow, and before the rule changes, I really thought Purple Man would be meta. I don't remember that Purple Man. I don't remember what he did. Again, I'm I not pissed because I'm like, eh, man, whatever. That Ghost Rider was sweet. Not for, like, super meta play or anything, but that sculpt was amazing. Sculpt is beautiful. The chain going through the air. Oh. That's the kind of sculpt that I wouldn't mind, like, setting up next to my computer or something mm. on my desk, you know? Um, we have an answer from PJ Bolin. Said, I'll miss my girl, Sam. Uh, glad I got to play her in her first big event and then again in her final. So, uh, Sam Cap. Cool. We've got Citizen Chris Kurtz coming in with playing mostly Silver Age. I have no real concerns about rotation. Hey, another brother. Uh, I do wish <laughs> this kid games would give us more bad guys to play with. Yes, I def- I would favor a bad guy set. Good comment. You know, that's actually come up before. Mm. It's about how you, Sinister is going to go down as like one of the worst sets like ever or whatever. But I really love that set. There were Mm. so many bad guys in it and obscure figures that you're just, I just never thought that we were ever going to get back then. And 
It was really cool. And the sculpts in the set were actually really amazing. And really good for mod fodder, by the way. <laughs> if you are the type of person that wants to mod hero clicks, look no further. Click through some of the figures in Sinister. You'll understand. Uh, but that was such a good set. So, yeah, I totally i am on board with that. Let's bring, let's get a set full of villains. I think that would be super cool, especially DC villains. They have actually, in my opinion, DC villains are better than Marvel villains because the yeah. rogues galleries of, like, Batman and, to an extent, Superman. I don't really like Superman, mm. but I love Superman's enemies. Like, Parasite is awesome. I there think are he's good such ones a in there. cool, yeah. cool villain. Uh, we have an answer from Vigilante, Mr. Clicks, uh, Flicks, who said, Sad Marvel Knights in mass. Uh, happy to see Hawkeye, Shredders, and Sam Cap go. Mostly Sam, Sam Cap. <laughs> Calder's listening to this right now going, I'm going to get a hold of Jamie. <laughs> Jamie's wrong. <laughs> That's a brilliant, um, brilliant lead or brilliant uh, link into this one. Then, so we've got Marcus Zilla on Twitter saying, "Going to miss the Shredders, not going to miss Sam Cap." <laughs> uh, Brian Poling said, "Super rare penguin. I will miss my little waddling agents of May." <laughs> uh, Matthew Ventura. I just have a quick name check there. I think he's clear. I think he's okay. Okay, cool. Um, when considering the competitive environment, there's two pieces that come to mind. That I am both sad to see go and also happy that they are leaving. And that's Sam Cap, boom. And Overdrive. I love Overdrive. Really? Other than, yeah, that's other like, than that. That's like Calder's team, like half a Calder's team. Right there. <laughs> there's two yeah. pieces from his like meta team that he was playing for. Like, this world just came like, crashing down. No, no. <laughs> so Calder's one of those people that rotation drastically affected, by the way. Um, uh, Matthew, he finishes off with, other than that, Shredders can go to HE double hockey sticks. <laughs> okay, I think I might be butchering this guy's last name, but I'll, I'll try. <laughs> Matt Grichunos said, glad to see it all rotate. Keep the game fresh. I'll miss same cap the most. Hey, at least we have somebody in same cap's favor. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, we've got Michael Fedor. Sorry to see Lazy Man Namor go. Is that the guy on the throne? Lazy Man Namor? Uh, my Atlantis oh, teams are so yeah, much less yeah, without yeah. him. And AW From Warpie. Civil War, yeah. Well, he, he's got the whole list here. He's got, like, I was sorry to see Lazy Man Namor go. My Atlantis teams are much less now without him. And AW Hawkeye will not miss the mini shredder. So he's listing off all the favorites. Okay. Um, Todd Butcher said, Shifting Focus Punisher from ADW and the Punisher from Civil War. Love those guys in the van. He will be missed. Goodbye, Shredders. You will not be missed. <laughs> uh, then we've got, so Chance McCool, he has not got a status yet, correct? Okay, cool. So we've got Chance McCool, I'm going to miss Baron Zemo and the Bolts, the Spider-Verse gang, the Defenders, every Captain America. Oh, I can feel a little step coming here. Frogman, Pog Penguin, Devil Dinosaur, the Shredders, I won't miss Overdrive, Sam Cap, or Hawkeye. They are so broken. <laughs> I feel like if Calder could have gotten his hands on a Hawkeye, he would have used Hawkeye too. <laughs> yeah. And so he adds on, and oh, pouring on the FAT, pouring on the fat out for my dude, Goblin King. Oh my god, I forgot about Goblin King. Mm -hmm. Holy cow! That was, that feels like so long ago. That, that one actually does, that one actually feels like it's age. Uh, John Carl said, uh, gonna miss World Breaker Hulk. I wanted him to work so badly, but couldn't find the right combination to do so. And he is also glad to see Hawkeye go. Yep, I think it's another one coming up now as well. We've got Colin Bell. I will miss Karen Page. Won't miss Hawkeye. Karen Page, really? Apparently so. <laughs> okay, I mean, I'm not going to yuck your yum, but I mean, like, <laughs> okay, all right. Um, James Craddock said, in modern games, I will be sad to see super rare Baron Zemo go. Such a great piece for making all other Masters of Evil and the... Oh, no. Oops. <laughs> Accidentally exited out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we here at the Dial H, uh, we're, we're professionals, you know, where we just like to pretend like we're professionals and eventually I'll get to where I need to go again. This is why I don't use uh, Facebook. Um, Thunderbolt's piece is better. Who will I be glad to see go? Shredders. Dealing penetrating damage just for moving? Lame. Actually, yeah. <laughs> You, no, I, I'm 100% on his side on this one. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I've got one that's unavailable to me, the tweet. <laughs> Someone doesn't like me. Um, so the last one I've got is R.I.P. Ace the Bathound. He was such a good boy. <laughs> Who's that from? That is from Derek. 
Just okay, just Derek. Uh, I will try to rattle through these last few that I have on Facebook. Then uh, from Mick Miller, which would be like the twentieth Miller, I think mm-hmm. that, that is part of the Dialage community. Uh, I'm sad to see Ghost Rider rotate since Mammoth Rider just came out. That Mammoth Rider, by the way. Have to play it with the sound effect, okay? Just saying, otherwise mm-hmm. not playing it right. Uh, John Marillo said, I know no one else will agree with this, but I'm going to miss Ameridroid. Great position piece to mess with my opponent's team. It won me a win a map tonight. Smiley face. Uh, Brandon Lambert said, Lambert said, Hand Sand Spidey used to be one of my favorites. Till the rules change made him feel overcosted and awkward. Yeah, I did not like that rules change. That did nerf him a bit and at one point and i'm glad i didn't do it now in retrospect before the rules change i was going to buy him and i about pulled the trigger on it but then the rules change was coming down the line i was like i hold up on buying anything anything at all because i was like i don't want to buy something for this exact reason and then that nerfed him and i was like oh whew, glad i didn't spend the money on that because he's just not as good anymore for the non-competitive um, ones amongst us what how is he nerfed because i still love him lots Okay, well, let me pull him up real quick and see if I can do that. Because, uh, like, Handstand Spidey is now, like, they're finally, I think, again, this is a it's division across the Heroclix. But for me, he's, like, he's he encompasses it in one dial most of the Spidey's traits, which I'm, like, happy about. He's in the right costume, right. you know, all that sort of jazz. So we are talking about uh, Spider-Man number 49, mm-hmm. um, the Superior Foes of Spider-Man set. For 100 points, here's why. Um, his top, his top ability uh, on, his, I'm sorry, his speed power on his top dial uh, gives him hypersonic speed, but only to make close combat attacks. He also has super strength top dial. So uh-huh. you used to be able to come in swinging for five. That's years. the ticket. Yep, yep. Uh, but then you just couldn't anymore because whiz kids. So. I, uh, from a game perspective, I get it. From a thematic perspective, yeah, it's kind of tough to kind of yeah, come swinging through with a massive dumpster full of trash. Oh yeah, I mean it. To, it like it totally makes sense yeah. for characters like like Hyperion or Superman. Mm-hmm. You come like just wham with a dumpster or something <laughs> out of nowhere. Like it makes complete sense. I do understand from a game mechanic where the, it would be too powerful for some of those characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, it this has been a thing for as long as I can remember. Because when hypersonic speed was introduced into the game, uh, for a while, believe it or not, the meta existed back then even. Uh, Kingdom Come Superman had hypersonic speed and super strength, and then people were able to use the specialty 3D objects, of which I have some of them, but I do not own the dumpster. The dumpster was um, indestructible. What is now called indestructible. Yeah. So you could literally, and there were no rules on like, what you, how many things you can pick up or put down or whatever in a turn. So what would happen to win tournaments? All you'd have to do is use Kingdom Come Superman, come flying in with this dumpster, dumpster smoke somebody in the face, it drops into an adjacent square after you hit them. You pick it up on your way out of the area to, for you to be able to do it next turn or the turn after that. And you just rinse and repeat. So that's how people won a lot of tournaments. Mm-hmm. It, it, was, it was just a thing that people did, and it was a very effective way to do it. But I just didn't see a lot of that. Like, if they would have made that rules change back then, totally understand why they would have made that rules mm-hmm. change. Nowadays, not so much. I didn't really get it. Yeah. Uh, I get it, but hey, all right. Crashing on. Sop, sop. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Tyler Mur- uh, Murin said, I will for sure miss Hydra Cap. I have not been able to get my hands on one, so it stinks knowing I never really got to try him out on a Hydra Avengers team. But glad Shredders are gone. They weren't a huge issue for me personally. I just got tired of hearing about them. Yeah, you and everyone else, man. I I totally agree with you. I've never even played one, and I already don't ever want to play against one. Uh, Matthew Armour said, I'll miss my Joker thugs. (laughs) thugs. I'll miss my Joker thugs. They they were real cheap and made all my Jokers just a little harder to kill. Shredders, I won't miss them at all. David Herberger said, uh, the Dr. Octopus from that... um, uh, kit the monthly kit uh one of those pieces you feel a bit dirty to play no you think you make like 15 <laughs> attacks in one turn it was dumb those free flurry attacks are nasty now we have a medusa as a replacement long range free action after carry attacker yes and not only for like your i don't know if this is like 
super meta, but is definitely in the popper tournaments because <laughs> she's only like an uncommon. So that's a thing. And the last answer that I have is from Peyton Goldston, who said, Sad to see Joker's Wild go. Oh, the whole set. But I will not miss the Wonder Woman gravity feed. I What was in the Wonder Woman? I'm about to say, I, I think I missed it on the way in, let alone the way out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, hold on, let me pull this up. 16 figures. We have the extremely meta Cheetah that came in at 40 points with top dial, leap and climb, and nine attack. Um, Etta Candy, ever the super popular 20 point piece that had probability control, mm-hmm. but only when she is adjacent to friendly characters 100 points more or named Wonder Woman or Steve, Steve Trevor. So, yeah, you know, like lots of meta in that uh, Wonder Woman set that came out. <laughs> Uh, there is a 40-point Raven in there, but the new Raven that came out is actually... Amazing. Yeah. I played a couple of times. Really she good. is so versatile. So glad I picked that up. Uh, really, really good. So, Okay, well, thank you, everybody, for jumping on the Community Tuesdays question. We do have an update on the Dial H home base initiative map. I just want to say this. Holy crap, guys. I did not expect this to, like, blow up the way that it did. We are at the point where we we put out a the new maps that, once again, we have to give credit to where credit is certainly due with all the work that he's put into that. And that is, uh, I believe it's Citizen uh, Kirby Ronnie is the one that is making these maps. And he's doing this completely out of the, the, the kindness of his own heart. And he's doing great work, but he can't keep up because there's so many people, when he makes the map, there's people that are coming in afterwards and are like, I'm claiming this territory. Well, he just got done updating the map. So, like, as of right now, the map is already outdated again. Wow. And we, and we still we still have to give him more. I'm trying to, like, be nice and not send it, like, just daily updates or stuff. I just kind of, like, try to block it all together in one one message and be like, Here's here's six more to add to that. Here's five more to add to that. And I'm like, whew, oh, man, I feel bad for you. But, hey, on, on the good side, the good side, um, as of right now, you can only claim a state or a country or a uh, province one time, and it's claimed. Uh, Calder and I have been knocking around the idea, and we're workshopping this, nothing is set in stone, of challenging for an area. Uh, kind of like a bit of a, a competition, so and we don't know what the rules are yet uh, for sure, but uh, we think it would be really cool that if someone, say, was sitting on, we'll just say Indiana, and they were sitting on it for like two or three months or whatever, then if somebody else who was in Indiana, they wanted to challenge the person for uh, ownership over Indiana uh, that would be cool, and it would be like an ever-going competition just within the realm of Dial H. But we'll uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. I'm not really sure. Um, but if you guys have ideas on how like some rules might pan out, that would be really cool, really interesting to uh, read through. And you guys can send them to us uh, for Calder and I to go through. You don't have any ideas off the top of your head on how that could work, do you, Jedi Legends? Well, I challenge thee to a duel. That sort of thing. Um, how about? I mean, it depends. If you go online and do the like the roll twenty, you can have like a game of hero clips across that, and the winner gets it. Perhaps is that keeping it too much in theme? Is that making it too much? Con- is that too much convolution? Do you think? I I don't I don't know. Uh, we can certainly we can keep workshopping it. Uh, we don't know because I don't know. People want to play extra games throughout the week. Some people don't like roll twenty, but maybe they do. Maybe they'd be interested in doing that. Um, not only so originally there was just like one map, right? It was the kind of the United States overlay, and then off on the sides we we had added uh, Canada and Australia. Well, now it's too big for one map, so it had to get blown out into three maps because um, we actually got. Um, Mexico was claimed by Emez Santimon, I think is how you pronounce his name. Uh, so he claimed Mexico at least until one of the other states uh, are claimed in Mexico. By the way, I had to learn that Mexico is also broken up into states because I was ignorant of the fact. So doing my own research, there are, I believe, 31 states in Mexico, which now I know. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, we There was a joke that apparently went over a lot of people's heads, and I don't understand how this went over people's heads. Me, uh, Australia 
had to get broken up into two, and I think it's going to get broken up into three different areas now. But the map is okay. flipped upside down because that's the joke. <laughs> and people are like, people are like, why is Australia upside down? Really? Really, guys? <laughs> yeah. Take a moment. Think about it. Nearly. You'll get it in a second. <laughs> if you if you listen to this podcast for very long, you realize the humor here is very it's satirical humor. Like it's, it's like of course it's upside down. Why wouldn't it be? So um, although it does look like all of North America is claimed at this point, uh, whether the United States, Canada, and and Mexico, unless you are counting Central America as part of North America, which for this purposes we're gonna say no, unless that offends somebody, and then I'll. We'll figure it out. But So if you uh, do want to claim a state that has not been claimed before, you can write in, or, or a country, or a uh, province, or state of a different country. Uh, you can write us in, let us know what the name of your venue is, and where it's located, and we will try to put that on there. Uh, as long as it is not claimed, at least until we figure out what the <laughs> rules are on uh, challenging some stuff. So there's that. And then I think the last thing that I have for the community section is going to be a uh, happy Arabian birthday. And that's going to go to Tristan Campos. He said that my birthday is on July 3rd. And can you give me some love? Absolutely, you can have some love. And then that sexy happy Arabian birthday. Here you go. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So if you know of somebody or it's yourself, you want to get a shout out on the on the podcast, just let us know whose birthday it is, when it is, and you can hear the sexy tones of uh, and get a happy Arabian birthday as well. Oh, okay, I think that's that's pretty much an episode. I don't know if I have anything else in the community section. Do you have anything else, Mr. Jedi Legend? No, I'm all community out. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, as always, seriously, thanks for coming on, man. I hope you had a little bit of fun. Yeah, it's always fun. Good show. Thank you. Of course, of course. Uh, don't forget that you can follow us. Jump onto Facebook. Just search Dial H for Hero Clicks. You can like and follow our page on there. On Twitter, where you can get Jedi Legends Hero Clicks tips of the week every week. We are at Dial H for Hero Clicks. That is the number four. We always retweet that. And you can go ahead and give uh, Jedi Legend a follow as well on there. What is your uh, Twitter handle? So if you go for a Jedi Legend, you should be able to find me. Jedi Legend in there. That's the name. I'm a cowboy with a hound in the minute. <laughs> Where's that from, by the way? I'm just curious. That's uh, my Red Dead character. Oh, okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. Is that your favorite game? Uh, of all time? Wow, tough question. It's 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 up there at the minute. Definitely top three. Oh, my. You know what? I'm, I'm so bad at this. You know what I just realized? I sent a tweet out on uh, Facebook, and Calder sent it out on – I'm sorry, on Twitter, and Calder sent it out on Facebook – um, and I said that we are coming down to – this is the four of the last four – or one of the last four episodes that I am going to be on before I finally step away from the podcast. And uh, if – I just asked if there's anything that people just wanted to know, you know, a any questions you wanted to ask uh, Calder, myself, anybody or anything like that before whatever, just to like bolster the community section before I head out. And we got some fun – questions that we can just we can ramble through real quick would you be interested in doing that with me jedi legend what to ramble through some stuff like that yeah i can ramble through some bits and pieces i think i had a question for you on that kind of basis too um, yeah go for it when you and Calder record are you guys in the same room or is uh you both different you know different houses or what's the what's the geography so, for you calder lives in south dakota a okay. different state than me and we have recorded in the same room exactly three times. Wow. Uh, two of which have been uh, this last Origins, and the time before that was also because of Origins. So, yes, we have only ever – we have developed our uh, our pros, if you will, mm -hmm. of podcasting based entirely off of knowing each other from the Internet, not actually knowing each other in real life. Smooth. Cool. It's the way of it nowadays. 
Listen. Trust, trust me when I say this. Don't go back and listen <laughs> to old episodes where Calder and I were just getting to know each other. We are not as fluid as what we are now. <laughs> it took literally years to get there. I'm now racing through point being going, scroll, scroll, scroll. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Also, we didn't have a soundboard back then. Lots of things have changed. Lots of segments have changed. It, is, uh, it has been some crazy stuff going on over the years. Uh, so we will jump over to the first question. These are pretty easy to get through. Uh, this is going to be from Superhero, the Ruffian, Little Plastic Superhero. It said, Cool Ranch or Nacho Cheese Doritos? All right, so it's obviously Nacho Cheese Doritos because I hate ranch dressing with a passion. It is, I have a story behind that and a real good reason as to hate ranch. And I didn't, I didn't really hate ranch before but then this thing in my life happened and if you guys are curious about that i'll talk about that later uh but i hate ranch dressing with a passion so it's going to be nacho cheese doritos all day long what about you with me okay so i go on holiday to america occasionally because we've got uh, my other half school family over there so every so often pop over got a little bit addicted to disney as well and i make some discoveries when i'm over there and one of my discoveries was ranch dressing and I was like, they don't sell it in England. How can I get my hands on it? So I kind of did loads of research, and it actually does exist. There is like a brand that does do it over here. So when I got back, like when I first discovered it, I'm like, go, head to the supermarket, to pick up as many bottles as you can. They may not sell it next week. So I got uh, kind of like <laughs> massively addicted gross. to it. <laughs> well, okay, so I live in the Midwest, and there's like a thing in the Midwest where people like to put ranch dressing on everything and i don't understand why like if you can actually go into like pizza restaurants here and there will be ranch dressing at the table you know like normally it's crushed red pepper parmesan cheese and some places also just put bottles of ranch out next to those and i'm like this is disgusting how could you do this before I, before i ask what it goes on so coming coming to this conversation as a tourist i'm like hey look 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 they've got ranch dressing oh, that's great it's lovely i would just chuck it on everything because i've got no idea what it goes with because i'm just so like uninitiated with it i'm a bit more a bit more up to date now but at the time i was like this is great look it goes on chips it goes on salad it goes in coffee this is amazing i'll try my girlfriend, goes in my girlfriend looks at me and goes, she just, looks, she just looks at me and goes, it's not that great. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> uh, uh, we're moving on. We're moving on. We're moving. Okay, Superfan Christian Bogan said, if you had the choice, would you rather be a writer or an illustrator for comics? So in the hypothetical work, I can actually draw. Um which I definitely cannot. But in this hypothetical, I would still choose writer uh, just because I feel like it would be a better representation of me telling my story. Like lots of artists tell stories through their art. I understand that. Um, I think I would probably be better with writing probably because it's more like the medium that I guess I'm kind of used to. Mm -hmm. I mean I do this podcast, so it's all about – words and wording and your lexicon vernacular and i would probably be a better writer than an illustrator okay yeah i mean when i was younger i used to be quite good at drawing but i think as an illustrator i'd take too long so i wouldn't be able to kind of like keep up with it because i wanted to take my time um but i don't do it as, nearly as often as i should do now uh, and the story element i think i have quite good ideas like vivid imagination but obviously i just don't write so i'd like to in a perfect world, I'd like to get into it, but I just think maybe my ideas in my head sound great to me. Then someone just goes, literally, boy, did you ever go to school? Because I'm quite, <laughs> I'm quite wordy, but someone like me is going to go, this is pathetic. What are you doing? So I don't know. Okay. Like, maybe I should get back if into it, it. If it makes you feel any better, there is no way on this planet you could write a worse storyline than something that it was written by Marvel. I bet some of the people out there were like, he's going to bash on DC again. <laughs> nope, it's Marvel. The worst thing I've ever read in my entire life was written by Marvel, and that is The Scroll Kill Crew. Look it up. It is the worst piece of garbage that I could, like. I pushed myself to get through it. It is not worth your time. I guarantee you, you could write something better than that. So I don't even worry about it. You'd be fine. Sure. Cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. 
Uh, we have protagonist Michael Miller. This said, what is with not stuff around nachos, guys? Nachos or cheese fries, with or without chili? I'll let you go first. Wow. So I love food. So I, there's very little I'll turn my nose up. So run it by me again. You got you got the nachos, and then you've got uh, what's the second option? Chili uh, cheese fries or chili cheese fries. Or just cheese fries or chili cheese fries. Yeah, go, let's go chili and cheese and fries. Let's whack all that flavor in there. Yes. Uh, I'm definitely going to go on that side as well. With the chili, um, I also it has to have like a mound of cheese on top of it. Like not just a little bit. I'm talking like a mound of cheese. Mm -hmm. And then I'm good, I'm good to go. Yeah, so that's my answer on that. This one was the uh, question that I thought was funny, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Protagonist Benjamin Umansky said, wait, is the show continuing? <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, protagonist Ben Umansky, it is continuing. Uh, Calder will be taking over entirely as the host, mm -hmm. and we, we are going to have someone take Calder's spot, or maybe a couple of people take uh, and, and bolster the show. I've often thought about, if this piques anybody's interest, about – kind of expanding the Dial H brand as more of just a podcast, more than just a podcast, where we could have people doing different jobs, like the tech aspect of it. And if we could get, like, sound quality people would be great. And people have uh, inquired about launching a Discord, and then we could have somebody that was, like, uh, the moderator of the Dial H Discord and things like that. So it wouldn't just be Calder and I. It could be like a whole team under the banner of Dial H. I, I thought that would be cool, um, but that's just me. Because uh, I was, you know, when I, when I knew that I was going to leave, and I've been saying this for a while, I was like, this is a legacy podcast. So when I leave, I definitely don't want it to die. So it's going to take work from people um, that are willing to put in the work to do it. And one really great way is to divide up that work so it doesn't feel like a ton of work for like one or two people or anything like that. So that was just an idea I had. Um, if there's anybody out there that is interested in something like that, uh, it is not up to me to make that decision anymore. It would actually be up to Calder. So maybe he would like that idea as well. And then uh, the last question we have on Twitter said, uh, this is from Citizen Mr. Clicksplix, said, if you guys won worlds, what figures would you each design? Give one or two special powers they might have. Uh, do, would you like to start it off? You want me to go, Jai Oh, uh, go on. You go first. Okay, so the figure, I know this is like not a figure that people would want because people would be like, oh, my God, we already have like 75 of those. Yes, I know we already have 75 of those, but I don't care. Probably Thor. I'd, pro I'd, probably, <laughs> I'd probably make Thor. It'd either be Thor or Moon Knight. Thor is my favorite character. Uh, the closest representation that we've gotten in my head is going to be the title character Thor, but I also don't like that title characters have a major downfall when they die, so I would, like, eliminate anything like that. I would make it an, like, actual OP Thor if I could do that, or I would make, like, a title character Moon Knight because I love Moon Knight. So give one or two special powers that they might have. Um, let's, stick with, uh, let's stick with Moon Knight, maybe, and maybe something to do with generating a, a Marlene Pog and maybe a Frenchie Pog, two characters that have never been made in the game of Heroclix but are always part of his entourage when he is uh, uh, in the comic books, as well as the Mooncopter. I think it would be hella cool if they made uh, some kind of ability. Or realistically, like in the best case scenario, they just make a Mooncopter uh, vehicle. I think that would just be unbelievably cool. Uh, so maybe if I won Worlds, can they just design a moon copter? We have moon knights. Give him a moon copter. I think that'd be cool. So that would be my answer. Do you have anything? Um, I was just sort of racking my brains thinking, yeah, they've done, because I've been collecting since the beginning and playing since the beginning, any character they haven't done yet that I can think of, they've kind of done it, even if it's just the one time, like Shriek was outstanding for quite a while. She's now out there. So characters they, that just they haven't clicked at all that I want, it's probably a really short list, and I know like tomorrow I'm going to think of loads of them, but off the top of my head, things that have already been done but not done for ages. So 
if you go back to the days of indie clicks, there's only like the one set, which is quite a nice idea and an amalgam of all these different comic brands. And there was like a set within a set that was just for the American market. And then there's a set within a set that was just for the British market, which I thought was quite niche, quite nice. So if I could bring a character and do a character, I'd probably go down the, the um, Judge Dredd. Oh, my God. Because I've got That was the best stuff. thing you guys ever made. <laughs> just saying. Over there in Britain was Judge Dredd. Um, <laughs> okay, that's not actually true. But uh, Judge Dredd is unbelievably cool. And I'm going to just let you know, when Indie Clicks came out and there were those pieces that were only released over in uh, – was it – was it Europe or just the United Kingdom that they were released? I, I'd go with Europe to play it safe because it's so long ago. I can't remember for the life of me. So I think I'll go with you Europe. Had, you had like uh, I can't remember what they were called. No, it was like Judge Fire or something like that. So if you go down, yeah. the, you got Judge Dredd, you got Judge Hershey. Oh, there's another lady. I can't remember her name now. Judge Hershey, and she's doing like this handstand kick. And then on the flip side, you had like a story called the Dark Judges. Which is not unlike Batman Dark Metal, to be fair. And um, you've got Judge Fire, Judge Death, Judge Fear, and Judge Mortis. Judge, Judge Mortis, yeah. yeah. So Judge Mortis, Judge Fire, Judge Fear were all only released. It says European exclusive mm. if you click on them. So um, I wanted those things so badly when that set came out. And I was like, there's no way to get these. Like, I could not get these for anything that was rel even relatively cheap. So just uh, so everybody knows, this came out in 2003, mm -hmm. okay? Do you remember what the internet was like in 2003? Yeah. eBay existed. <laughs> it sure did. But, um, like, Amazon, to the way it, ex it exists now, did not exist in 2003. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like you just, oh, I think I'll just get me a Judge Fear here. <laughs> Let me type in coolstuffing.com. Oh, it's only $3. Oh, no, that did you couldn't do that no. in 2003. It was like one of these pieces – which, by the way, they had the REV, so rev sets. Even, like, the rookies were, like, $8 a piece. And you're like, I don't even want this for $8. Like, it's not worth $8. It's because not. I mean, I think Veteran Judge, Veteran Judge Morty had, like, a 13 shield, which back in the day wasn't unheard of. But even then, you think, like, Craig is just blowing him and fall over. <laughs> uh, so, let's see. Yeah, Judge Mortis, 88 points with a top dial 13, mm. but he has impervious. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, with that eight attack, eight attack yeah. and, combat, and close combat expert with one printed damage. I have since okay. redolled the dog judges to make them just a little bit more competitive. Oh man, they're so they're so cool looking. Mm. No joke, but. And I actually read the Doctor uh, uh, Judge Dread comic with those judges in it, and. Uh, so cool, like so unbelievably cool. And yep. then you look at their hero clicks versions, and you're like, "This is so." Cool. <laughs> you missed you missed that by a wide margin, with kids. Nice try, but the next time. Yeah, they uh, they tried. I, they tried. That's I'll give them. Yeah, like, a little, yeah, no, 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 that's fair. That's fair. Baby, baby clap for the. <laughs> Okay, can, moving over to uh, what we can say. Okay, just in, the, in the era now, there's so many more things. Like you can get all the vehicles and stuff as well. And like, there's a few cool vehicles in the comic. So like, yeah. even like uh, the law master and all that. You just think, ah, oh, now's the time. Now's the time to do, like a, a gravity feed set or like a special set just for it. <laughs> oh man, we should get a judged red motorcycle. Yes, the law master. That'd be awesome. Ooh, there's, a, there's an awesome some guy who really likes shit uh, on the realm. Sometimes oh. it pops up. He's got an epic like a uh, custom scope for it. Right. Okay. Well, uh, we don't really have one. We have one more question on Facebook and one comment that was actually just really nice from Edward K said, best of the best to you, Chris, and thanks for your service to our country or to your country. Maybe he's not uh, American and your clicks work has made me my long days in tech service a lot more enjoyable. Thanks. You are absolutely welcome. So what I've been saying for a while is we're here because you guys are here and you listen to us and, we appreciate that, so no problem. And the one last question we have, not because he really expected to answer, I just I just know that he is this way. <laughs> uh, Superfan Lucas Van Hollen said, why is Chris so much better than Calder? Um, <laughs> it, it just is what it is, you know? Like, why is, the, why is the sky blue? I don't know. Just wake up and it's blue every day, and every day I'm better than Calder. So I don't, I don't know if there's really a reason to question it. And he's sitting there listening to this, and he's like, I hate him so much. There's like a red flag going up for Calder's next show now. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we're scrapping every one of your segments you ever did. We're recreating the show just because I hate you so much. That's probably not true. But uh, we give each other crap like that all the time because 
he's like he's like my hero clicks brother. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, once again, Dial H for HeroClix uh, on Facebook. On Twitter, we are Dial H for HeroClix. That is the number four. Let's see if we can get to 750 followers. You can send us an email. We get those from time to time. Uh, Dial H for HeroClix at gmail.com once again. And finally, thank you very much, Jedi Legend, for coming on. We always appreciate your weekly tips, man. We really do. Thank you very much. Jenna. Thank you for having me again. It's been good fun. I was looking forward to it. And uh, I wish you... But well, brilliance in your new venture going into the uh, into the forces. Thank you, I really do appreciate that. But you guys will have me for three more episodes. So uh, if you want, now would be the time. Jump into the community. Uh, just it's it's going to be a weird transition, I think, but it's going to be a good transition. And I definitely know that Calder can take care of it because he's like he's genuinely better at this than I am. So uh, <laughs> I do I do actually mean that. Uh, I, I give Calder a lot of crap, but I have nothing but actual, true, wonderful things to say about that guy. So um, thank you, everybody. And as always, Dial H for Here Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of your latest Here Clicks singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Bye, guys. Nice off.